I have a blended family. I love that term, blended family. It makes it all sound so easy, like merging two families is no harder than making a frozen margarita. Here's my family constellation. Me, my partner Scott, our son Henry, who's four, Scott's ex-wife, and their two children, a 12-year-old girl and a seven-year-old boy. Scott and his former wife share joint custody. So for almost half the time, the big kids, as I call them, are with us, and the rest of the time they're with their mom. She lives around the corner, and my son Henry is wild about her. He calls her his aunt, and is always rummaging around in her purse for a present, which she usually has for him. So basically, I have a husband and a wife. <laughs> Although, I'm not married to either one of them. The fact that they were married to each other for 10 years before Scott and I met should have rendered our peaceful coexistence impossible, only it hasn't. This is true mostly because the children are happier when we all get along, and each one of us grown-ups wants nothing so much as their happiness. The big kids call me their Ia. They have a mama and a papa, they reasoned, and since my name starts with E, I would be Ia. Now, being a mother is hard. Being a mother and an Ia, often at the same time, is harder still. Then try being a mother and an Ia with another mother, just a stone's throw away. A mother who does yoga and always looks pretty and has a glamorous job. I think any parent with more than one child will tell you that they parent their kids differently. The notion of one size fits all is just a fallacy, whether you're talking about leotards or parenting. It gets even more tricky when you're an Ia to two children and a mama to another, especially when said children are all in the same house and related by blood, just not yours. An Ia can love, parent, discipline, teach, cuddle, feed, wipe, bathe, clothe, and hug, but she cannot mother. When I was pregnant with my son Henry, I worried about whether I would love him as much as I loved the big kids. Now he feels connected to me in a way the big kids don't and can't. Just like me, he loves to read. He loves speaking French. Picasso is his favorite artist. I see the fire behind his eyes, and I'm like Narcissus, staring into the pool, crazy for the reflection. And yet, I find I have a firecracker fuse with Henry, but with the big kids, I'm infinitely patient, saint-like, in comparison. I am much quicker to discipline Henry. He has different rules than the big kids. He's never allowed to have soda or gummy bears. His television time is restricted. Maybe this is partly because he's still so little, but I don't plan on changing the rules anytime soon. I feel differently about single-sex education, nutrition, discipline, and bedtimes than Scott and his ex-wife. There will be differences in how the children are raised, and I hope Henry won't, res won't resent me too much. He tells me that when it's just him and me at home, it's more relaxing, but he desperately misses the big kids when they aren't with us and asks for them constantly. The 12-year-old is his second mommy. She runs a Cub Scouts program for her brothers, where she provides earnest misinformation on animals and weather systems. <laughs> they have a secret handshake. In our household, she enjoys her place as one of the girls, outnumbered by the boys, but supremely confident in her superiority. She is keeping me from sinking into a comfortable middle age. I sprained my neck, trying to do a back handspring. I went down the scariest water slide in the world, a 60-foot vertical drop into a shark tank because I wanted her to think I was cool. <clears throat> At 44, I'm learning how to ski and ice skate. She is also forcing me to relive the Iditarod like hell of middle school, but she handles it all with a grace I never had. Mostly all I can do is say, I'm in awe of you. Henry and his big sister greet each new day with joy. They're like two sprites. Their feet barely touch the ground when they walk. But the seven-year-old has a lower center of gravity. With his mother, he's the baby. At my house, he suffers from chronic MCS, middle child syndrome, caught between a big sister who occasionally picks on him and an adoring but entirely annoying little brother. He's brooding and contemplative. He's worried about the fate of the earth. 
He was Abraham Lincoln for Halloween. He's, he's saving for retirement. He is my challenge. Even though I've taken care of him since he was a baby, even though I always let him throw up on me when he's sick, even though the solar system cupcakes I baked for his birthday were to scale, <laughs> my, my very existence disrupts his sense of or order and normalcy. Where his sister sees me as a bonus parent, another person to love her and cheer her on at gymnastics tournaments, for the seven-year-old, I'm defined not by what I am, but what I'm not. I'm not his mother. Last week, he tripped over the gym bag, his gym bag strap, and he turned to me and said, I hate you so much. That's when I realized I am his garbage can for all his hurts and disappointments, for his pain and confusion. I asked my own mother what to do about this. She said, you just have to love him through it even if it takes the rest of your life. The other day, the three, kids, the three kids approached me and demanded to know whom I love the most. Well, I said, on any given day, there's usually one of you whom I like the most. It changes all the time. I love you all differently, but the same amount. That sounds a lot like the separate but equal doctrine, and that is not what I mean at all. I just mean that I would throw myself in front of a bus for any one of you. The 12-year-old nodded and looked satisfied. Henry hugged my legs and shouted, I love you too, Mama. The seven-year-old cocked his head and said, Yeah, that was such a cop-out. <laughs> Thank you.